Playboy Carti and Pierre Bourne were one of the most iconic rapper-producer duos during the late 2010s. Dropping hit songs such as Magnolia, Woke Up Like This and Pay 1993, the two discovered a recipe to producing hits over and over again. They were a generational duo. However, for some mysterious reason, Playboy Carti had stopped working with Pierre and left him for other producers, which left fans very upset as they wanted to see him on Pierre Beats, with some fans even saying that Playboy Carti wouldn't be where he is today if it wasn't for Pierre. So it's 20 2024 and the two haven't been seen together for over four years and fans don't know why. However, there has been some clues left behind for us to paint a picture of what went down. So how did Playboy Carti and Pierre Bourne become such a great duo? Why did they stop working together and will we ever get to see them work again? Hell After moving nah. to Atlanta in 2014 to study music engineering, Pierre Bourne had also plotted this move to the A so he can connect with different artists and producers, which worked out. As while in school, he met some significant figures. After graduating, he would land an internship at TI's Hustle Gang and another recording studio within Atlanta. However, he didn't enjoy either of those and it wouldn't be until his apartment got robbed that he would start making big moves. The incident turned out to be a blessing in disguise as after the robbery, Pierre went to stay with his friend who introduced him to multi-platinum producer TM88 and Aaron Reed son of label record executive oh gosh, L.A. Reed. Reed. After building a close bond with Aaron, it would eventually lead to him landing an engineering job at Epic Records in 2015, where he learned how to properly structure songs and make fully fleshed tracks. DJ Burn One would then give him his- I still think he is top five of that top 10. Best producers, bro. Best, best producer, bro. His beat making is fucking crazy bro first stepping stone not top five he's definitely top 10 in all time not just right now all time career by placing him in a studio session with young I mean, nude look, just look at what he did to nudie you heard his music if you ever heard his music before he met you would agree bro his music was i don't know questionable till he met pierre man literally saved his career where Nudie and Pierre themselves became a well-renowned duo, as it was the first time the world was introduced to Pierre's Spacey Beats, accompanied by Nudie's nonchalant rapping. However, towards the end of 2016, he would quit the job at Epic Records as he felt like there was no progression and with it being a full-time job, he didn't have any time to make beats. And luckily for him, the same day he quit would be the day he would get a life-changing phone call from Metro Boomin saying he wants to work with him, which further helped him connect with people within the industry. Picture of quitting your job, like, fuck. All right, I quit it now. What's next? What do I do? Like, fuck. You start panicking for two hours. You like, I don't know what I just did. And then somebody call you like, the hottest producer in the game right now. I want you to come to the studio. Are you trying to come through? And I was just like, I just quit my job. The fuck? Pick me up. <laughs> I got all my bags with me. Like, but unfortunately for Pierre, he still didn't have any sort of placements, so he needed money, which resulted in him bouncing around studios and engineering for money. This led to him one day being in a studio session with Lil Yachty's brother, K Supreme. In this session, Pierre gave K Supreme the beat to what is now Playboy Carti's hit song featuring Lil Uzi Vert, Woke Up Like This. After giving K Supreme the beat, Carti hopped on the song while in a session with K Supreme without Pierre in the studio. K Supreme would then inform Pierre of this, and at first, Pierre was angry, as he didn't like when people would get on his beats without his permission and on that same day Carti recorded woke up like this the song ended up going insanely viral as Carti posted the iconic snippet of the song on his social medias gave his case case of prince of beats and the next time i saw him in the studio he told me cardi got on the beat but i was confused i was like i gave those beats to you bro like why did you do that like why i was mad like i was upset I really was upset and then he showed me the video. It was on Instagram. It's the video of him in the car playing Woke Up Like This. Generational song. Like, one of a kind. It was I, too I can still play that to this day and will not get tired of it. Magnolia, on the other hand, please just shoot me if it ever comes on. I couldn't even be like, I don't like that song. <laughs> I like the song, but I was just like, I couldn't even be like, nah. It was too late. We linked maybe like two weeks later. 
But again, Pierre was annoyed, but this time it was because he wished people credited him for the beat on the snippet. However, at the same time, he was also gassed and knew it was a huge opportunity for him. And it would get even better, as a couple days later, Lil Uzi Vert would post his own snippet of the song, but Pierre didn't know if he had his own verse on the song yet. Sometime later, Pierre would eventually get in contact with Carti, where Carti told him the news that Uzi hopped on the song and that he fucks with his beats and wants to record more with him. So moving into the February of 2017, Carti is about to move back into Atlanta and lock in with Pierre. They would eventually start recording and kept making hit after hit, where Carti would be adding these songs to his debut mixtape self-titled. Pierre even told Carti, bro, you've been working on this shit for like three years. You can't just erase what you already had for the tape. Because if you didn't know, Carti has been working for the self-titled mixtape for years and has had multiple versions scrapped because he couldn't get along with the producers, which I actually spoke about in my Victims of Playboy Carti video with Milan Beats and Mexico Dro, so you can go check that out. Go check my eyes out. Too. If you don't, you just, you just don't like me, and that's pretty understandable. But do I care? Not really. In an interview with XXL, Pierre would also give us the backstory on how he made the woke up like this beat, where he told us, I think I made it in my Uber on my computer. I plug up my aux to my computer and just cook up, just like if I were in the studio. Which is actually incredible, how he is able to make billboard charting songs in the back of a car. And once Carti started rapping on Pierre beats, he couldn't get enough. As Pierre stated in an interview, the beats on Carti's project, those are all new beats that I made either the day before I came to see him or the day off. The last session we had, they were blown up my phone all day, but I just didn't have any beats. Pierre would give us more stories about his first couple times working with Carti. He would tell us how he made the beat to the hit song Magnolia. He said, I made the Magnolia beat in my friend's Mustang on the way to Zaxby's smoking weed. That was like a daily routine throughout the week. Cause once I met Carti, we started going to the studio every day. He would then explain how the first time he was in the studio with Carti, he only played him one beat, which was a song, Let It Go. As Pierre was nervous to play more, as in the studio with him was renowned Playboy Carti producer, Mexico Dr who made the beat for the song Broke Boy and in general is a respected producer in the underground. Great, Pierre said in an interview, I was kind of nervous on what beat to play first because Mexico Dre was in the studio and he got some hard ass beats and I was like, these fellas made Broke Boy, I can't come here and try and top that. And another fun fact, one of the first songs created by Carti and Pierre Bourne was One Day. Now of course, this was recorded in early 2017. However, really? a couple years- Really? I don't know why. I hate end like that song. I don't know. It, it, it gotta be in a certain mood for me to listen to that. I know mad Cardi fans can say they listen to that every day, bro. I, I don't know. I, I gotta be in a mood to hear that. Is down the line, Drake had expressed interest in hopping on the song to Ian Connor, to which Ian sent him a version of the song with an open verse, which is when he said, bro, Carti really incredible, man. I'm all the way down. Send me the beat, which is when Ian would send him the open verse and we would get the one day remix. As they continued working further into 2017, around April, they would continue recording, ready for the release of Playboy Carti's debut mixtape release. Now, Woke Up Like This, already released in the previous month of March, which ended up being a hit. So the two knew they were cooking up some generational stuff. They would then record the song Magnolia, where Pierre explained, I think we did Magnolia, I kinda already knew. I didn't know what was going to happen, but I knew something. We were already working and I think Woke Up Like This had already came out or something like that. So I saw how the world gravitated towards that and I was like, okay, they like it, they like what we okay. And eventually, on the 14th of April in 2017, Playboy Carti's self-titled project was released, and it's safe to say the world was stunned. ASAP Rocky's protege managed to drop a SoundCloud era masterpiece with two of the songs from the project, Magnolia and Woke Up Like This, charting on the Billboard Hot 100. But all this success wasn't entirely due to Carti's talents. Pierre Bourne was a huge reason Carti blew up. No one ever heard beats like this before. Magnolia- and This will forever be a debate whether Playboy Carti got carried by Pierre or Pierre got carried by Cardi like bro no one really had the upper hand although the beats were cool you gotta get credit Cardi on how he like it's not like anyone can do those beats it's, it's like those beats were made for him so you can't really say both of them had the upper hand but I can't see how people would say Pierre though it was a game changing beat and that song also spawned the iconic yo Pierre you wanna come out here producer tag sampled from the Jamie Foxx show <laughs> Yo, Pierre, you wanna come out here? With the reason the tag was added in the first place being because as you might remember before, Pierre wasn't publicly credited for the woke up like this beat and he was annoyed. So this time it was his mission for people to know who he was, which he accomplished by adding that producer tag. And I was recording him this time, right? So I was like, 
Yep, put my tag all on this bitch. Hell nah, I was like, y'all ain't gonna do me like like woke up like this. I wasn't there. I wasn't there. I never got to send in the full beat. That's just a loop. Like, shit's a loop, 40 seconds. Sorry to interrupt the video, but if you're enjoying it so far, I'd appreciate if you could subscribe, like, and comment. I'm trying to get to 30K subs ASAP, so I'd appreciate that. Let's get back to the video. Yeah, and after producing fair. six tracks on a self-titled mixtape, Pierre and Carty were the hottest rapper producer duo in the game. Now, post self-titled, everyone wanted a Pierre B. Trippy Red, Gunner, Lil Yachty, Lil Uzi Vert, 6 9 and many more industry stars. And after their viral hit Magnolia, Pierre and Carty would be in a world of their own, when Tory Lanez would attempt to drop a remix to Magnolia, after Pierre already declined to send him the original B. Tory Lane still ended up making the remix, even though Carti and Pierre rejected them. And I mean, he was flamed because the thing sucked. And overall, Damn. Carti and Pierre didn't need this remix. They were the superstars, they were the ones breaking the barriers in hip hop. They don't need another rapper to help them out. After a successful year for both of them, Carti would unite with another hot rapper in the scene, Lil Uzi Vert. And I mean, you guys already know about these two, an iconic duo of the SoundCloud era, both leading that generation with their own genres. So when these guys came together and announced a drop on a collab tape called 1629, fans' worlds were rocked again. We will never get this, which is crazy, bro. The most anticipated, top five most anticipated albums to drop and we'll never ever get it bro like people will be delusional like just let it go again so after announcing this project fans were constantly being edged by the aura of these two goats teasing the bro don't oh my gosh you almost made me click off the project then a tour and the music video they were ready now the mastermind behind this project was supposed to be pierre born songs from the project would leak later down the line so just throw it up break the bank and big bank which fans fell in love with seeing both carty and uzi on pierre beats all at their peak was an experience however unfortunately for everyone the album would never be released and most likely scrapped due to differences in carty's and uzi's lives but we can only wish that one day we will hear 1629 but as we round up 2017, it was time for Carti and Pierre to get back in the lab and cook up for Playboy Carti's debut studio album, Die Lit. The project would be big for both Carti and Pierre, as not only were they both solidifying themselves within the industry, but it would also be the first time the world would be introduced to Pierre Bourne's rapping. However, leading up to the rollout of the project in the May of 2018, there will be many bumps in the road to release. Firstly, the lead single to the album, Love Hurts, featuring Travis Scott, produced by Pierre Bourne, would be leaked. So as damage control, Carti's team acted quickly and released a song on streaming services. Further leaks such as Foreign, Chopper Won't Miss and Shooter would cause Carti to surprise drop the album, only a day after announcing the release date of the project, which was again due to not wanting the album performance to be impacted by the leaks. And on the 11th of May in 2018, Dialit would be released, with 15 out of the 19 songs produced by Pierre Bourne himself, with the album exceeding all expectations, being termed as genre-defined and the revival of trap music. Carti and Pierre knew they created a classic. And as I mentioned previously, this would be the first time for many of us we would hear Pierre's rapping on the song right now. We explained in an interview with Kids Take Over how it went down. Nah, I did not like that song. That's not the first time I heard Pierre rapping, but when I listen to like his new and like old stuff, I'm like, the fuck is this? World took me in as a producer because of Magnolia. I was rapping first. Cardi posted, switched on me on his Snapchat before Magnolia even came out. Yeah. That's my song. Mm -hmm. He called me and said, I ain't know you rap. I was like, you ain't tell me to play you my rap song when I pulled <laughs> up. You said you wanted to play some beats. I and I would have rapped on the first album, but I said, nah, I kind of like this shit. I might blow up as a producer, be one of the biggest producers in the world. Fuck it, let's do it. Let's mm -hmm. run it up. After the success of Die Lit, Pierre would go back to his rapping roots and drop The Life of Pierre 4, a 16 track album with the project being written. Beautiful, beautiful album. Beautiful. Taylor 5, Taylor 4 and 5, bro. Beautiful performed, produced, and engineered entirely by Pierre himself. But after this, it was time to get back to work and craft Carti's next album. The first teaser we would get of new music from Carti would be when the iconic snippet of Cancun would be posted on social media. 
previewed on the 2nd of July in 2018 by Orge videographer Hiji World, fans were shown a teaser clip of Carti and the King of Grime, Skepta, dancing around a parking lot in the UK, flexing jewellery and throwing cash while dancing to the mesmerising snippet, produced by Pierre Bourne himself. This is top, this is a hands down top five. I don't care what anyone, this is top five, top five greatest snippets of all time this shit lives rent free in everyone's head to the point where it got remixed it got changed up the whole song leaked just by the picture it speaks a thousand words you even gotta play the video it's this generational it would go viral and the snippet itself would get an entire fader article after fans made a three minute loop of carty saying my tummy see Hurts, where Fader claimed it was a song of the summer. Shortly after that, Carti would be seen speaking to Virgil Abloh in a video, discussing the name of his second studio album, Whole Lot of Red. Which at first had fans confused, as before this, Carti had said on Instagram Live they would be getting Die Lip too. Which would explain why Cancun had the exact same style and sound as all the tracks on Die Lit. Now, the announcement of Whole Lotta Red had Carti go through an entire rebrand, moving away from the punk rock star vibe to more of a serious punk emo vampire style, staying away from streetwear brands such as Supreme and Jordan to more high fashion with brands like Rick Owens and Alix, which was predominantly due to getting more into the fashion space and hanging out with prominent figures within the industry, such as Matthew Williams and Virgil Abloh. You know, like fashion is just a way for me to express myself without speaking you know i just i wake up whatever mood i'm in you know that's how i dress but changing his style and image wasn't the only thing he was doing as we were getting closer to the release of hollow red freaky. carter would be changing his sound and working with new producers which can be first seen by a tweet from richie Souf on the 20th of october in 2018 where he said me and carter just did like 10 songs however before hollow red became what we know it as today with beats from filthy starboy Bro, it got to the point where we couldn't wait didn't he like he talks about a whole lot of red like what three it had to be like two three years before he actually dropped it they dropped they said they dropped out themselves because i'm pretty sure when uh pissy pampers got a leak they, they literally made that shit themselves and put it on album. whatever leak they could get a hold of made the album themselves out of town in KP, it was at first predominantly supposed to be Pierre Bourne. Close fashion friends of Carti, Ian Connor and Luke Sabat, would be seen previewing a Carti song on the 23rd of December in 2018, called Place, produced by Pierre Bourne, where again, it kept the same beats and flows from Die Lit. Towards the end of 2018, Ian Connor would tweet, Suck my D again, Hollow the Red, best album of 2019, which he would then quote retweet, saying, Mixtape, pardon me, which would be followed up by Pierre also posting tweets, teasing the project to be released in the year of 2019 and of course fans were excited they just got die lit in 2018 and about to get another album hollow red in 2019 oh, as we move into 2019 well. in march one of the most iconic playboy carty songs would be previewed on an instagram live for the first time ever pissy pamper <laughs> But I actually need to correct myself as it is a young nudie song and was supposed to feature on his and Pierre's collaborative tape, Slime Ear. However, the song Great is built album. around the Great intro album. to Japanese Great singer Mai Yamane's 1980 song, Twilight, who from what I can find, played a fundamental part in making the Japanese pop scene what it is today, a pioneer. And I have heard people call her the Drake of Japanese Bro, pop. that pissy pampers had like 10 artists on that song. It was like every time I heard a leak, it was another artist. Added to and the it. sample the, the last one I heard it had like Travis, ASAP Rocky, Young Nudie, uh, Cardi. It ended up clearing. Now we don't know why. There has been many fan theories, with it either being she wanted too much revenue from the song, or she didn't want her music to be played alongside the vulgar lines from Cartier and Nudie, or just in general, she didn't want her image to be associated with modern Western hip hop. But just a month after the song was previewed, it would leak online, which further complicated the sample clearing process. It just won't get clear. Right. And especially because it leaked, the people that I sampled, I know they feel some type of way. 
but it wasn't us that leaked it. But fans were desperate to hear the song, so a high school sophomore took matters into his own hands and unofficially uploaded a song onto Spotify under the name Kid Cudi. Now this leak would end up going number one on the US Viral 50 chart on Spotify, earning rare headlines for an unreleased song, and Carter even performed it at Rolling Crazy. Loud and Coachella. Well, thanks to a kid named Lil Cambo who told Genius, quote, before the song came out, there was a snippet on YouTube and it sounded like it would be a hit if it was released. A couple weeks later, the song got leaked and I posted it to my channel not thinking about how big it would get. So who knows where Carti, Nudie and Pierre would be if this song was actually released. But what this song did for fans was tease them with what to expect on Carti's whole lot of red. His prominent baby voice accompanied by Pierre's usual mellow beats. In the July of 2019, more Carti songs would leak with the most prominent ones being Neon and Molly. Now, this actually got fans concerned, as this many songs leaking could possibly delay Carti's album, or even worse, get it completely scrapped. However, in that same month, fans got some good news. Carti would announce at a show that he in fact would be dropping Whole Lotta Red in the next 60 days. I try and drop my shit in the next 60 days. We were, I feel like we worked too hard for this moment. So, the countdown started. After this announcement, we would first get Ian Connor teasing the Drake song, Pain 1993, featuring Carti, produced by Pierre. However, that wouldn't end up releasing until a year later. Now, these 60 days would be going by quick, and all fans were getting was more leaks, promises of the album from Carti's Instagram, and even more leaks, with songs such as Butterfly Doors, Switching Lanes, Cancun, all surfacing online, with the majority of these songs being produced by Pierre. So, to fans, it seemed like whatever is going to happen with this album, at least they'll be getting all these beautiful Pierre Carti songs. But that couldn't be further from the truth, nah. as this was when the V1 era of Holler the Red ended, and moving into 2020, Carti would be shifting his sound and working on Hollow Red V2, where Carti took the baby voice to another level by losing even more testosterone, making his voice higher pitched. <laughs> What I think it is? But it would be during this V2 era, from leaks, snippets, and Carti himself, we could see he was branching further and further from the classic Pierre Bourne beats Damn and was starting God. to work with producers Damn such as Jetson Made, Richie Souf, Out of Town, and Starboy. Overall, having this more bouncier style of beats. People were so used to Carti and Pierre, it was hard to accept change. He even stated in an interview in early 2020 that he's working with a new producer every day. It's not even me taking my time and saying, oh, I'm away to hear the drop my shit. I'm with a different producer. Yes. Every day. And he's like, damn, I'm like, yeah, this is the sound right here. That's what's up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need to go that's that's facts. And it would get even worse when Carti officially dropped one of these features voice Jets and Made produced songs, Atmet, which had the internet in tears due to the unique voice Carti presented on this song. After Atmet, Carti would then be featured on Drake's Pain 1993, produced by Pierre. But again, fans were disappointed as Carti kept with the weird voice, especially with the fact that the song had another version where Carti used his normal voice. However, his close associate, Ian Connor convinced him to keep the baby voice verse. Now, after an eventful year for Carti, being arrested, getting on Drake's album, and birthing his son, well, now it was time for the whole lot of red rollout. On the 23rd of November in 2020, Carti would post on Instagram, album turned in, referring to the fact that he submitted the album to his label, and now he's just waiting for their approval to drop it. He would also go on Instagram Live the same day, previewing the song New Tank, produced by Filthy, with the song showcasing Carti's new sound, aggressive rage beats with a deeper voice and overall darker tone oh which for fans oh she's fucking dreads is hanging by a thread right now fans was a very magical moment not a single person apart from carti had an idea what the album would sound like just two days later carti would preview go to the moon featuring kanye west produced by out of town and wheezy another aggressive track with a sound people have never heard before carti would then feature on flex up with Lil yachty and future where again carti was on this aggressive almost rage like beat and at this point in time, fans had no idea what to expect. They went from having baby voice, bouncy Pierre produced snippets from Hollow Red V1 and V2 to this dark, aggressive punk style with completely new producers. Academics would then come out on stream and announce the most anticipated hip hop album ever will be dropping on Christmas Day. Playboy Cardi, whole lot of red, from what I've been told, will be dropping on Christmas Day.
So as expected, Hollow Red would drop on Christmas Day and the world was shocked. All these new producers on these rage beats that weren't really a thing back then. What happened to Pierre? He only managed to get two placements on the album, on the songs Place and I Love You I Hate You. And fans were confused as Pierre even came out in an interview a couple months back saying how him and Carty were locked in and he was begging him for beats. So he calls me, I just got up. He's in the studio all night. He's like, yeah, I just did all those beats. Send me some more. I'm like, no, dog, no, 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 no. Say it ain't so. Like, you did all the beats? He's like, yeah, man, send me some more. I'm like, we are working. Like, every, he's in the studio all the time. So I just try to make sure I'm, mean, that's keep, I keep facilitating the beats. And he will blow my phone up all day, all day until he gets those beats. But in that same interview, he would also explain how him and Carti aren't as close anymore. Me and Carti, we don't even be around each other like that no more. Like we talk, we talk all the time, but I don't know. I think, I think after I started trying to finish my album, I just got so consumed in that, that that became my real focus again. But not saying that I stopped producing for him, cause I always send beats, always, always send beats. But I noticed I don't have to physically be there. Pierre even put out two tweets, showing how upset he was, he was basically left off the album. Fans even came out and protested all these new producers, saying they ruined the album and they want Pierre back. Well, Carti would explain in an interview later down the line why this change in producers. He was asked by Kid Cudi, you worked with 23 producers on this album, why do you work with that many producers on a single album? Which he replied with, you got rappers who like being around rappers, and then you got rappers like me who like being around producers. I'm always looking for that new sound. I'm a producer head, that's what I love, and I'm never stuck on one producer either. We're only getting older, and I like having young fellas around me to tell me what's fire right now. I ain't ever dropping an album without mm. popping a new producer, or giving a producer who's been going crazy his spotlight, so it was normal to me. Carti also explained in another interview with Inked that's Magazine smart. about wanting to sign Pierre like Bourne that. to his OPM label, as on the song Punk Monk. Ain't he really helping him out by giving him recognition, by letting the young, the youth, cause there's, bro, there's kids, bro. That anti-social beat was made by a 12-year-old. The one with Tana, Slums, I think Kobe was on it, Cash, bro, all not even able to drink it, let alone be able to drive rapping like that and making beats. It's crazy. On the whole lot of red, Carti said, I was trying to sign Trippy Red before they knew about Trippy. I was fucking with Lil Kid when he made Lil Blicky. I thought I'd pee but the label tricked me. Which he said in an interview, I slept on it and I woke up and he was signed to a major label. I wasn't really salty about it. I was just looking at it like, all right, cool. I just need to lock in when I step into a room with some people from now on. Because I feel like people just started looking at my taste and my opinion. All right, if Carti likes it, sign it. Boom. So who knows? If Carti ended up signing Pierre, what direction they would have went in today? But what from Carti said, it just seems like he's always advancing onto the next thing. He doesn't want to become stale, which explains why he's working with all these new producers such as Starboy, Out of Town, and Filthy. But Pierre would then come out an interview in 2021 and say, me and Carti got way more music though. We locked in the majority of last year. So him just putting those two songs on the album, he's just playing with the world. He's holding onto all the music we got. But as we know today, Pierre would be very wrong. As after Hollow the Red, Carti and Pierre would only have one more official release together, which was Switching Lane on the life of Pierre 5, where Kazi and Pierre rap together for one last time. Well, after the last song together, they would get into some disagreements. Firstly, Carti's opium label signed artist, Ken Carson, would send shots at Pierre on Twitter. In 2021, a fan asked if Ken would ever work with Pierre, to which he replied with no. And Ken would further elaborate on this, explaining the fact that Pierre refused to work with him earlier in his career. So now, he wouldn't want to work with someone who swerved in beforehand. And honestly, it ended up working pretty well for Ken, as he managed to develop his own sound with the innovative Dutch duo, Starboy and Out of Town, who are pioneers of the modern rage sound, mixing elements of EDM with Atlanta Trap, making Ken Carson who he is today. Then on the 2nd of April in 2020, Pierre would have released a music video to his song For You. But later that same day, Carti had decided to drop the music video to his hit song Sky, which got Pierre angry. And this led to him sending out a tweet which read, fella really don't want to see me glow, this written. Basically saying Carti doesn't want to see Pierre flourish as he's trying to overshadow his music video by releasing his own on the same day. And honestly, it was 
odd from Carti. Hole had already dropped four months prior, and he decides to drop the first music video from the album on the same day as Pierre, and to the public, it seemed like the duo was crumbling right in front of us. And we would actually get further insight into what their relationship was like, when Opium Baby, close associate of Carti and co-founder of the Opium label, would start dissing ASAP Rocky for leaking his and Carti's song, Sights. Now I'm not gonna give an entire breakdown, as I've covered it multiple times I love in- this song, hey, the song grew on me. I don't know, that verse from ASAP Rocky was very questionable, but I have to listen to songs like, bruh, Cardi on it. Like, it's something. Past videos, but Pierre tweeted at Opium Baby, don't buy a hand that feeds you. Basically, why are you dissing Rocky when he gave you all careers? To which Opium Baby responded with, fuck Pierre too, I had to beg bro to let you in the studio. Basically saying, Carti doesn't even want Pierre in the studio with him anymore. And the one time Pierre tried to get in, Opium Baby had to beg Carti to let him in. Which is just, yikes. Then in 2023, Pierre would be on an Instagram live where he would pin an Instagram comment which said, we need Pierre X Carti, but that doesn't really tell us anything. I mean, really, it just kind of showed us Pierre got kind of shoved aside by Carti and they're not going to be working together. And it's just kind of like a last grasp at trying to get Carti to work with him again. But Pierre would be nowhere near the Opium team. Carti didn't mess with him anymore. Ken Carsten doesn't want to work with him. Destroy Lowly didn't show any interest at all. And it wouldn't be until the 10th of October in 2023, Pierre Bourne would produce the song What It Is for Opium Signee's Homicide Gang. Which is cool. The song is cool. But it's kind of sad. Pierre Bourne had to go to the bottom of the Opium food chain to get a beat placement. And it just kind of shows he doesn't have that same pull he used to have. Which could have also played a part in why Carti Carti moved on. Now in the current day, in 2024, Carti has been previewing a lot of music in the rollout for his album, Music. Which the majority of it being produced by KP Beats, Cardo which and Dodgy Volta, striving for a completely different sound. Which is what Carti should be doing, what artists should be doing in general finding new sounds. And it's working. He's currently sitting on 60 monthly listeners, but that is because he is constantly changing his sound. Working with stars like Metro Boomin, Camille Cabello, and Kanye West. If he was still stuck on Pierre, making baby voice music, it would have gotten stale and he may have just fallen off. So can we even blame Carti for not working with Pierre anymore? And is it just how the industry works? Mm, it's how the industry works. It, it really is. Hey, you got a few day family, bro.